And Steve Commissar was buying up securities so he could run dirty money through brokerage accounts. It was one of the methods he used to throw investigators off the money trail. I would um, purchase stock through company checks and then have that converted into cash by selling the stock and having a check made out to a person who would then cash the check. The trick for Commissar was to get his money in and out of the brokerage. When an asset hider has money stashed in a bank account, he needs a way to get it out without writing a check to himself. Buying securities was one way for Commissar to extract his money. He explains the process. So what you would do is you would um, receive my check. I'd buy stock, let's say, in Microsoft or a solid company. And then after a little while, I would sell all the stock, maybe leaving a little bit of it left. Well, the stock brokerage firm would write a check to anyone you want to for the sale of the stock, whatever you had in your account. That could go into one account, and that account could write a check into another account. And it just makes the trail a lot harder to find. The harder the check is to find, the better for a fraudster like Commissar. And of course, this is just one of several concealment techniques you might run into as you search for hidden assets. A particularly valuable investment, gold trading is one of the most common methods for hiding money. It was a favorite technique of Steve Commissar. There are people all over the country called gold brokers. You can buy and sell gold. In fact, if um, you were a gold broker, I could send you the $10,000 and order some gold from you. You could take that gold once you get the check and you could put it, the gold bars or gold coins in a box and mail it to anywhere that I tell you to mail it to. Of course, the gold was purchased under a false name so it couldn't be traced back to Commissar. Knowing that bankers are looking to report suspicious transactions, fraudsters like Steve Commissar often take another approach. If they want a report to disappear, they simply bribe their banker to make it go away. You find a branch manager at your bank and you befriend him and you offer him amounts of cash that when you come in and cash a check or receive cash, $80,000, $100,000, that he's going to lose that report or not file one. With the bankers in his pocket, Commissar could easily avoid the government's reporting requirements. Bribery of bank officials is a common occurrence in money laundering schemes. Restaurant business is very good because restaurants deal with a lot of cash on a daily basis and the money goes in and the money goes out and there's really no telling if um, 300 people came in that night and bought $10,000 or $60,000 worth of booze. And you have to understand the kind of people you're up against. People like Steve Commissar. Most anyone is corruptible when presented at the right time with the right opportunity. What makes me different is most people will say I'd never want to try something like this. I'd never want to do this. Most people are scared. That's why most people don't make very much money because they're scared to take a risk and take a chance. Criminals take risks because they think they're entitled and they think they're smart enough to get away with it. And finding that money is how to make crime pay. For the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, I'm Natalie Luna. I took a risk. I wanted to have money. I wanted to have power. I wanted it all. And it's not worth it. All the millions I made, all the fun that I thought I had, it's not worth it.